just for beer stuff. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Today I'm going to be in uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. So 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'll read verses 1 through 5 and we'll pray and get started. So 2 Timothy chapter 4 says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, Lord, and I praise you, and I just ask, Lord, that you speak to us today, that uh, I just pray you convict us, encourage us, Lord God, strengthen us, and uh, I just pray, Lord, that we can grow as we uh, apply your word to our lives, Lord God, and I just pray that this word will get down into our hearts, Lord Heavenly Father, and that it will change us all, Lord. And I love you, Lord. I praise you. And uh, I just ask that you speak to all of our hearts here today, Lord. And we love you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, um, here in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I was reading this, and it, and it makes me think of today, especially the latter part of those verses I read. Where it, they're um, right there, starting in verse 3, where it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You see that today big time, right? People, um, and this is, and like he says there and there, he says they're going to heap up teachers for themselves. You see this today. That's why I believe there's so many churches around. Because people divide over dumb stuff, right? Especially nowadays, if you got a preacher who just preaches the Bible, folks, it, that's outdated, right? That's outdated. They sing hymns and they preach out the Bible. That is outdated. You better tell me something cool and come up with some really cool sayings or I ain't staying around. And you see that. I, I see this a lot with preachers. Um, and I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, so I see a lot. People are always trying to come up with the next cool saying or find this next secret thing that they found in the Word of God. And it's like, just preach the Word of God. Just preach the Bible to people. No one needs a cool saying. People need the Word of God. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy here. He's saying, look, he said, I charge you before God and it, just preach the word. That's all he says. Preach the word of God. That's what our world needs today, right? Yes, we probably do need good leaders in charge and everything, but what the world truly needs is the word of God. That's what the world needs. Is everybody going to believe it? No. Is everybody going to trust in it? No. But that's what people need because like Paul says in the book of Romans, it is the power of God to save the Jew, the Greek, anybody the word of God is the power, right? Not a certain leader, not a certain person. It is the word of God. And that's why today I want to talk about this is proclaiming the word of God. Christians got to stand up and start proclaiming the word of God and quit coming up with these excuses for why they don't. Oh, I'm scared. I'm nervous. I just don't do it. It's not convenient. This and that. Quit making excuses. We have to go out and proclaim the word of God. God has commissioned us to do that. This ain't just for me. And like, yes, this section of scripture right here, it speaks straight at me. It speaks at pastors, preachers, teachers. That's who, that's who, that's who Timothy was. And that's who Paul is specifically putting this to. But this goes out to everybody. These scriptures can be implemented into everybody's life in here. Preach the word. Go out and preach the word of God. Don't don't try to be um, like look. Think about what he's telling Timothy here. He's not, you know, he's not. He doesn't tell him, hey, go out and start a good kids ministry, get all these cool programs in your church, do all these cool things. He says, no, one sole thing I charge you with: preach the word. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just stick to the scriptures. And he tells he's and he and he warns him there because I. Whenever I read this, because sometimes you can get discouraged as a preacher, especially if you're one that just stick to the scriptures. Because like I said, people think it's outdated. People want to go over here where it's cool or where it's this or where they got this or that for their kids. And sometimes you can stand there and get discouraged. But notice he tells them there, starting in verse 3, he tells him, look, these things are going to happen. People, There's going to come a time when people, they cannot stand sound doctrine. 
if you just preach the word, they ain't going to be able to stand it. They're going to leave and they're going to go get people who fit their fancy or what they want to hear. That's what they're going to go do. So don't be surprised when people start leaving or when you preach the word of God and people are like, that ain't for me. I'm going to go down here. Don't, don't be, he's telling Timothy, don't be surprised when this happens because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And we have to understand that as, um, as believers. Look, the word of God isn't always, uh, people aren't always going to take it like we think they should. They're not always going to sit there and just be like, shake their head and agree with you. Sometimes people get mad. Sometimes people are going to walk off. Sometimes people are going to tell you you're an idiot. That's okay. He just says, preach the word. No matter what they're saying, no matter if they're agreeing with it or not, just preach the word, Timothy. That's all you got to do, just preach the word. And, um, and, and, and this is why we have to be obedient and tell people about Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand, first, the first thing Paul does, and, and for us as, as just general Christians in general, is we all have a call to share the gospel. Every single body does have a call to share the gospel. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see that? That's the great, what we call the Great Commission. And a lot of this sermon today, it's going to be a reminder of things because we need to be reminded of this stuff. Especially if you go watch the news with Iran and Israel and all this crazy stuff going on in the Middle East. Look, the world needs the word of God. They need to hear about Jesus. And that's why I want to talk to you about this today. But look, that's the great commission there. He's saying, look, go out and tell people about me. Go out. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You've got to go out and preach the word to people. How are people going to know to believe in Christ if there's not someone to preach to them, to tell them about Jesus? Like, look, you need Jesus Christ. And, uh, and that's what Paul's telling Timothy here, the first word there. He says, I charge you, therefore, before God. He's charging him. And what's he charging him with? Preach the word. He's giving him, he's kind of commissioning him, saying, look, go out and preach the word. That's all you got to do. Go out and preach the word. Same thing God calls us to do. Go out and tell people about me. Go out and testify of my gospel of who I am so that people can be saved. Because it's, look. Like I said earlier, no person, no thing, nothing can save anybody but Jesus. He's the only one who can save somebody. Yeah, you might get it. We, let's, I'll just bring up Donald Trump. You might get him in office and he might change the physical realm that we live in. He might change our economics. He might change the way the country is going. He might bring some peace, some stability in certain places. But he cannot save anybody spiritually, right? And I promise you, I'd rather people be saved spiritually than things fixed physically. If I have to pick one or the other, I'm picking the spiritual. Because guess what? All this physical stuff's going away. It's going to be burned up and thrown away. You ain't even going to know it existed. But you're going to go live eternally in one of two places. Either heaven or hell. And if people don't know Jesus Christ, if they don't trust Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're going to spend eternally, eternally, eternity in hell. Now, I want to see people be saved, and I know that's God's heart, too, and that's why he says that he's patient with people, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. And you have to realize that, and that's why it's so important that we get out and that we share the gospel with people, that we proclaim the word of God to people. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a teacher to share the word of God with people. You don't. And, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You see this? He calls us. But he's, and he's given us this word of reconciliation. He says, after you've been saved, Jesus saved you. He's called you out of darkness. He says, he's, he's given you. He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And that's what Paul is doing here with Timothy. He's saying, I charge you, you're becoming an ambassador. Like, here's your message, and this is all you have to do. 
just preach the word of God. Just preach it. Just preach God's word. And that's what we need to be doing. We have to proclaim God's word. And, and we do that, and I think we do it in two ways. We don't just do it with our mouths, but we do it with our lives too. With our, We do. It's, it's hard to preach to somebody when you don't live something, and it's hard to live, or how can I say that? It is, it's hard to preach when you're not living something, right? It's hard for people to, um, especially people who know you, to listen to what you're saying, right? And that's why you have to be living that stuff. You, you have to be implementing the stuff that you're preaching in your own life. And that's hard sometimes because, look, we fail, we make mistakes like the closest people to me, my wife, my kids. They know me deeper than anybody. So they know my failures and my shortcomings and stuff like that. And, but, and that's why we have to live out the word and we have to preach the word too. We have to have both those things come in, in conjunction with one another. They have to work together. But like I said, he, he gives him this call to share, but also he tells him what to share, right? He tells him, preach the word. Romans 1, 16 through 17, this is why. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek. For in, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, that is, as, as, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see that? He's telling them. It's the gospel. That's what we're to share. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, if you just flip back one chapter, he tells you, all scripture is given it by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see that? It's, it's the word of God. And, and he doesn't just give us some... Uh, uh, and this isn't Paul just coming up with something for us to share. He's giving you, he's saying, look, just preach the scriptures. They're inspired by God. These things are totally inspired by God. And some people will say, no, they're outdated. They're not inspired by God. And, uh, one of the things that you might run into with people, especially nowadays, a lot of people like to, one of their arguments is, is how the Bible was translated. So they're like, what? The Bible nowadays, the modern Bible is corrupted because of how it's been translated. So I'm going to tell you a secret of how to combat this. So if somebody ever tells you that the Bible, since it's been translated down in so many languages, right? All this translations that it's corrupted. I want you to ask them a question. And I heard a guy say this one time and it makes total sense. So the Bible's written in Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew, Tiger. You say that Aramaic, ain't that Aramaic, something like that, okay? And it's been translated on down, right? They they've translated in all these different languages, and um, so some people will say, all right, through all their translations, somebody messed up somewhere, and we got a corrupted word of God. Well, let me ask you this: If I told my wife something, it's like say we're gonna take what I'm saying today in English, and we're gonna translate it to Swahili whatever. Y'all ever heard of that language, Swahili? That's what we're translating to today, what I'm preaching right now. So my wife, she knows English and Spanish. So I'm gonna, right now, she's writing it down in Spanish, everything I'm saying, right? I'm saying, I, I got it in English, she's got it in Spanish, all right? So Kenny, he knows Spanish and Egyptian. So he's over there, he's taking, she's doing my English to Spanish, She's transferring it over to him. He's putting it in Egyptian. Well, then it gets to Miss Connie, and she knows Egyptian and uh, what's the Middle Eastern? Arabic. She knows Arabic, so she's writing it in that. Well, then Jenny, she knows Arabic and Swahili, so she takes it from her and puts it in Swahili. Now, did the integrity of what I said get lost in all that? No, it's just a translation of the translation is all it is. If I wrote this down, everything I'm saying, and you translated it into all them languages, nothing got lost. It's just getting transferred from one language to the next. It's the same way the Bible was passed down. People, somebody knew Greek, Aramaic, or Hebrew, and he translated it into this language. Then it got translated here, then here. Nothing got lost there. This You can rely on this, I promise you. Don't let nobody fool you and tell you that it got corrupted. It's no If I write something down and hand it to somebody and say, hey, write this in your language, it's word for word. It, nothing got lost there. 
Nothing got lost in those translations. It went from one language to the next. So don't fall for that. The word of God is true. And people want to do anything they can to downgrade it because, and one of the reasons why I believe is because it's so convicting. It is. It's one of those, it pierces the people's hearts. And the only way that I can get that away from me is to downgrade it and be like, oh, that ain't real. You know, is to deny it when the people need to accept it. Like, yeah, that's where that conviction you feel when somebody tells you, preaches the word of God to you, or they show you in the scriptures what you're doing is wrong. That conviction you feel, don't deny that. Accept it, repent of it, and move on. So we got this word of God, this pure, holy word of God. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, one, like he tells uh, Timothy here, he tells him, he says, just preach the word. That's all I want you to do. And I talked about this some earlier, but one thing I see a lot on YouTube now is, uh, is these deliverance ministries. These people put these big conferences on, and that's all they do. They're, they call them deliverance ministries, where they're delivering these people from demons and all this stuff. And I want to tell you something. You want to know the greatest way for somebody to be delivered from a demonic stronghold? The Word of God. It is. You preach the Word of God to somebody in my faith, they trust it. Guess what? They're delivered from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. It's that simple. And I'm going to tell you right now, anybody who comes and tells you that a Christian can be demon-possessed, I'll tell them they're wrong because I don't believe Christians can be demon-possessed. And some people do, but I think they're wrong. I don't think that is right at all. I don't see any uh, examples of it anywhere. I don't believe the house of God. You know, what's God say? He says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Look, God's Spirit don't dwell with demons. It don't. I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm going to... and. Uh, and so, so I want you to look at this. Like I said, it's the word of God that, that delivers people. Colossians 1.13 says this. He says, he has rescued us. In other translations, it says delivered. Delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of, of his beloved son. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So how did these people get to that point? Go back. Colossians 1 verse 3 and 8. It says this. He says, we, we always give... We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard about your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. The faith and love proceeding from the hope stored up for you in heaven, of which you have already heard in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. You see this? How were these people delivered? How were they rescued from the dominion of darkness? Because the gospel was delivered to them. The word of truth, the gospel was sent to them. He says... All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood the grace of God. You learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also informed us of your love in the Spirit. You see that? That is the Word of God. This is why the world so, so desperately needs it. Men, men of God, women of God, to stand up and just preach the, proclaim the word of God to people. You ain't got to do nothing. We don't, he makes it simple here. He's not telling him to do something extravagant. He's saying just preach the word of God. And that sounds, uh, I know it sounds easier than it is because, right, sometimes, I'll be honest with you, preaching the word of God ain't easy. Sharing the gospel with people isn't always easy. But that's why he tells Peter there, he says, be ready in season and out of season. Because it's not always going to be it's not always going to be convenient, and that's what he's telling Timothy there. He's saying, "Be ready when it's convenient and when it's not convenient." And serving God, and you all know, it's not always convenient. It's not always convenient. It's not always on my time or according to my plans. It's according to His plans. So He says, "Be ready in season and out of season, when it's convenient, when it's not convenient. Always be ready." To preach the word of God, to share the word of God, you know, be ready when it's popular and when it's not popular. When people are praising and clapping and saying hallelujah, pastor, and also when they're, you know, they got their fist up in the air at you, saying shut your mouth, you still be ready. Be ready to preach the word. That's what he's telling Timothy. And the great thing about God is not only does he call us to share or give us what to share, but he gives us the power to share. He gives us a heart 
And that's what, as a Christian, we should want to do these things. Acts 1 8 says, But you, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, or you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see that? That's what empowered the Holy Spirit that all believers have, the Holy Spirit with them. That's what empowered these believers to be God's witnesses in the book of Acts. That's how these men did these great things and endured these great sufferings and uh, just went around just proclaiming the word of God. That's what got them in so much trouble, too. You read the book of Acts, they wasn't um, who they were that was getting them in, in trouble. It was the word that they preached. That's what people hated. And that's why Christ tells them in the, in the Gospels, he's saying, look, know they're going to hate you because they hate me. And you got to understand, people hate the word of God. They hate Christ. So when you get up and proclaim him and tell people, look, you're sinful, you need Jesus Christ, people aren't going to like you all the time. They're not. Not everybody's going to accept it. But God gives us the power, the Holy Spirit within us to do so. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says, In him you also trust, trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. And that's just reiterating the fact that we have the spirit of God within us. God gives us the power. He gives us the ability to be able to proclaim his word to the people around us, to the world around us. And uh, even though we have all these things at our disposal, we have the spirit in us. Like I said earlier, it is hard sometimes to preach the word to certain people. It is. Sometimes it's hard to share the word of God with people. And it's kind of like the young uh, Bible college student. He was uh, witnessing in a small town. And he, uh, he came to a house and there was an elderly gentleman sitting on the front porch. And he said, are you a Christian? The old man said, no, I'm a smith. The Christians live two door down. So he said, you don't understand. I mean, are you lost? The old man said, no, young man. I've lived here for 25 years. I ain't lost. And he says, but are you ready for the judgment day? The old man said, when's it going to be? The young, the young man said, well, it could be today or it could be tomorrow. The old man said, well, please don't tell my wife because she'll want to go both days. You know, sometimes that's what it's like witnessing people, right? It's like you're, <laughs> it's like you're talking to that wall. Like, and, and it's hard sometimes. It is. It's very hard. But we still have to be faithful. We have to be faithful to share the gospel with people. To, uh, and like I said, not just share it, but to live it out in front of people and just love on people. And I'm telling you, it is what our world needs. It, it definitely is. Our world needs people who will get up and just proclaim the word of God to them and not um, keep making excuses for why we don't. I know I've made lots of excuses before, especially one of the biggest ones is, they would never be saved. I used to say that about uh, my wife's real dad. We used to both say it. He, he had never go to church. He would never get saved. Then one day we're in a church meeting and the preacher gets up. He's preaching. It was Tim Norman. I'll never forget it. We, he was sitting in front of us and he was preaching. and He uh, got there to the closing and just said, you know, uh, telling him how we have to repent of our sins and how God loves us and he wants us to come to him. And I'll never forget her dad turned around and he said, even me? I'll never forget that. And it's like, yep, even you. And he went up there and put his faith in Christ. And uh, I always think about that because there is those people that we look at and we're like, they would never, they wouldn't even step foot in the church. They would never be saved. And guess what? I'm telling you, that gospel message, that's the power of God. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about what we think. It's that message is the power of God. It's truly the power of God, and it saves people. I'm telling you, it saved me, somebody who a lot of people probably said would never even be stepping foot in the church. And look where I stand in the church now. It's That's amazing. It's all of God. And we have to be faithful to that and be faithful to his word and his message because that's what the world needs. They don't need more programs. We don't need more counselors. We don't need none of that. We need people who will just proclaim the word of God, preach the word of God to people. And I know the world and people will look at me today and say, uh-uh, you don't understand. You, you're, 
you're crazy. No, I'm not. No. This Bible right here says preach the word. No ifs, ands, or buts. Just preach the word of God. Love people, preach the word of God. That's all you got to do. Some people are going to like it. Some people ain't. Some people are going to trust it and put their faith in Christ. And that, that stuff isn't up to me. What's up to me is what I do with what I've been called to do, and that's to proclaim the word of God. And that's all I can do. That's all I'm, that's all I'm supposed to do is just preach the word of God. And that's all all of us are supposed to do. Love people. Just go out and just share the gospel with people. Love them all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you, Lord, and I praise you. And I just ask, Lord God, that we all have a heart, Lord God, that wants to that wants to see all men be saved, Lord God. And the only way for them to be saved, Lord God, is for them to put their faith in Christ. And the only way for them to put their faith in Christ, Lord God, is for us to proclaim Christ to them. And, um, like your word says, how will they know without a preacher, Lord God? And, um, in a sense, Lord, we're all preachers. We're all preachers of your gospel. And we're all heralds of it. And, uh, I just pray, Lord, that we'll be obedient, Father, to go out and um, not be afraid or ashamed to share the, share the gospel with folks. And, uh, I love you, Lord. I praise you. And uh, I just ask that you watch over everybody here, that you bless them, protect them as we go our separate ways, Lord. We love you, Father, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.